built in 1926 by Arthur Glick um, as a Prohibition era uh, investment. He sold it in the early 30s and to a gentleman named Bill Levy and he actually operated it all the way up until his death in the early 70s. By 1936, all the gold gilt, all the plaster, the cornices and all that was already considered really very passe. And the Hollywood Theater had just opened up in 1935, which was very streamlined in Art Deco. So Bill Levy decided at that point it was time to update the theater and remodel it. And uh, that's when they covered up a lot of that and tried to make it a lot more, um, I would say, Art Deco or streamlined. That is probably the most invasive remodeling project that happened here. Structurally it was okay, um, but beyond that it was really tired. It was pretty depressing actually. It was, it, somebody had painted it all just turquoise blue, inside and out. The front of the building, the brick actually had a metal facade over it that had been put on in the early 60s, so. And it's basically from the front of the building to the back of the building. I mean like an example is we just put new carpeting in just this fall. The chandeliers are pretty cool. They actually are not original to this building. They came out of an old theater in Texas. They're from about 1912, 1913. The curtain, the, uh, the red velvet on the sides actually came out of the old Columbia Heights High School. And um, the stencil part on the front uh, came off the grand drape of the Grand Forks Orpheum. That's from about 1929. Uh, the organ is actually not original to this building. The original organ that was put in here in 1927 uh, was long been gone. Um, this organ is actually owned by the American Theatre Organ Society and they do all the maintenance on it and installation. It actually, the main part of it, the chests, the pipes and all of that, which really makes up the bulk of what the organ is, came out of the old WCCO radio studios. The organ chambers though, on each side of the proscenium, <laughs> there was just a flat wall there. They had been covered up. I think they'd been covered up around, oh, I'd say 1936, 37, when they actually took the organ out of here. And they filled the orchestra pit in then at that point and they had seats going all the way up to the front of the proscenium. Uh, the other thing too that um, I did about three years ago was the columns on each side of the proscenium we actually restored. They had been busted out in the uh, probably in 36 when they did the remodel. And we actually have the original blueprints for the building and we had a photo of the stage. And so that's how we were able to basically re re uh, reconstruct the columns. I had a photo of the exterior of the building from 1933. But again, in 1936, when they did the remodel here, that sign came down and they put a huge, 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 monstrous Art Deco sign up that, I, I mean, it was, um, it was twice as high as the sign that's on there now. Well, the person who actually threw the switch to light the sign uh, was a woman named Eleanor Sleds, who was the original box office cashier at the theater when it opened. Mm -hmm. 